Pat, what's going on this morning? Hey guys, welcome. Good morning. Welcome to this week's Friday Coffee Break. Here with uh, Bob the Chance and Pat Precourt. And uh, welcome to this beautiful morning here in Connecticut. Hey, um, a lot of cool questions, and a lot of them are based around the recent uh, release by Freddie Mac, which is in regards to a, an unauthorized, not unauthorized, an unauthored um, newsletter that went out, which I'm going to talk to you because there's so many questions. I'm just going to take one of them and give me to give us a general idea here. Um, uh, reminder, managementshortsale.com, all the upgrades are online, and it's going over to the new name of Prop Tracker, and the reason we're doing that is because it's no longer just specific to the short sale industry. If you're a rehabber, all your repair estimators are built in there. If you're a wholesaler, your deal analyzers are built in there. A tremendous amount of additional applications have been added in there. So go check it out. Go to managementshortsale.com. It'll automatically roll over for you. And you get a free trial. So try it and you'll love it. There's nothing out there in the market like it. I'm getting close because it's loud here today. It's noisy. But um, here we go. First question is from uh, Gerald. He says, hey, Patrick, I want to purchase a property in a company name and LLC, but have been given warnings that some are being rejected. This is in terms of, like, Freddie Mac won't take a short sale offer um, from an LLC. Uh, one of my associates mention adding the phrase as agent for and submitting my name on the offer or on a, or an addendum. He said he picked it up from one of our Friday morning coffee breaks. Can you give some clarity as how this might work? Thanks. Um, yeah, it should basically say Patrick Prequit as agent or Patrick Prequit as member, one or the other. Um, it doesn't have to say as agent for or as member for, just Patrick Prequit as agent, Patrick Prequit as member. What that does, that allows you to take title in any entity that you want. But it's putting the uh, everybody else on notice that you are an agent or a member of, you're representing their, your human representation for something other than just you. And that's what that technically does. And that's how our, all our offers are made and we'll decide later how we want to take title to that property. Um, so that keeps it really simple. Uh, that's a good question, Joe. Next question from Susan out of California. says, hey, Pat and Bob, have you read the recent article from Freddie Mac? It be yes. This is uh, two weeks ago this Friday it came out. Uh, two weeks ago today. It basically says that short sales could be fraudulent if the lender does not have information about a prearranged flip. It's sort of what it says. Okay? Uh, we have an addendum to purchase. We have an addendum to our purchase contract that states our properties may be sold for profit after the closing to a known or unknown purchaser. I understand this article is just an opinion at, at this time, but are we covered in the event of these changes? Is anyone at the government level going to bat to the investors? Uh, thanks for all you do. I enjoy listening to your opinions. All right, a couple questions here, Susan. Number one, yes, there are people looking into this. So that's it. You know, this will always, it'll always go answered. Everybody's got to understand that this article put out by Freddie Mac was one author's opinions, and it doesn't even state who the author is. So we don't even know the gravity uh, by which Freddie Mac stands behind it or does it. And that's to be determined. In terms of your disclosure, the stating that you're a, that you want to resell the property, that's not enough. Okay, the challenge Freddie Mac has, if you're in an A to B transaction, uh, waiting for your short sale, then you get a contract to resell the property B to C, and you have a a contract, a, a, an executed contract for more than the A to B contract. They're saying they've got to be made aware of that, or it's a fraudulent transaction. In there opinion. Now, I could argue that all day long as could many others. Now, the disclosure should state that you, uh, you intend to immediately market the property for resale upon um, uh, this initial contract, A to B, A to B, that you're buying the house well below fair market value, A to B, and you intend to sell it for way above what you buy it for, B to C, with the intent to make a profit. Make it clear you're going to market immediately and sell it for more. So, you got to be a little more uh, deeper on that disclosure if you want to cover you there. Okay? And I'm just kind of, that's not the exact words I would use, but you get the gist of it. Okay? And you'll, you'll hear a lot more about that from me and some other, you know, thought leaders in the industry as we go along here. Next question from Buddy Rich Steffen. Based on what we know so far about HAFA, where do you see the investor's opportunity other than the potential upfront negotiation fee option? This is where I see it, Rich. It's going to force quicker actions uh, by the banks. They're going to have to speed up the process. So we're going to know sooner whether or not they're in the game or they're out of the game. Okay. Number two, it's going to help us deal with the 
junior lien holders a little easier because we're giving them more money. Number three, it's going to help us to facilitate a smoother transaction with the seller because we're giving them a ton of money, up to $6,000 in some cases, which is silly. Um, so from that perspective, it's going to make the transaction happen faster. And the speed is key for us. Uh, where it goes from there, who knows? You know, we don't even know. You know, there's no enforceability of these half guidelines in place. So I don't even know who's going to participate in them yet, Rich. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. It's kind of funny. But I do see that overall as a good thing. Okay? There are, one thing I'll caution you guys on, if you, if you start doing these transactions and you're advising your client on the half of guidelines, you must make it clear to them that once they sign up for the short sale program, they're also agreeing to deed their house over in lieu of the foreclosure if they do not sell it. Yeah, they are. They're agreeing to that. Number two, they're agreeing to make full payments on this property during the short sale process. That's not heavily noted anywhere here, but they're committing to those two things. So make sure they're aware of that. Okay. Uh, next question from Diane. If deficiency judgments are forgiven, will the IRS treat the difference as taxable income to the borrower? The answer is absolutely, positively, yes. I just dropped a computer. Um, absolutely, they will. It's, that's, it's always been the IRS code that way. There are some exceptions. Okay, there's the um, Forgiveness of Debt Act or something like that that Bush put into play, and then Obama extended. That takes a few uh, potential um, taxable events away. You got to do some research here. Your responsibility as a short sale investor is to send people to a certified, qualified. Uh, CPA. Okay, don't try to take this on. Don't try to analyze whether or not they're exposed to this tax or not. Let them know that they might not have to pay it, but they got to go to the right source, the right expert to, uh, to advise them on that. Uh, my realtor does send me and my realtor does send me and have me on an automatic email list for all the short sales that come into their office but I'm new to real estate investing. I know some things, but obviously not enough to go out and make a living out of short sales. He is extremely knowledgeable about the process and the different ways to approach a short sale. Uh, I, I guess my question is, what would be the best way to get my realtor to work with me in regards to the best and quickest way to complete a short sale deal in the least amount of time? I live in Maryland, and my, in my area there are massive amounts of short sales. I feel that I'm missing out on the deals. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually there, just sitting there. Okay, I get what you're saying. You said you have a very knowledgeable real estate agent, and very knowledgeable in the um, all aspects of short sales. If that's the case, and they're proficient in debt negotiation and are willing to do it, you sit back as the investor, let them send you the lead, and then you make offers on them. Wash your hands of the rest of it. You don't have to know much about short sales to be able to do that. As a matter of fact, you don't know. You don't have to know anything about the short sale process if the, the knowledgeable real estate agent is willing to do all the work for you. They bring in the lead, the seller. They're going to do the debt negotiation. You just make the offer, and get ready to close this deal. Uh, not nothing else to do there. Um, you say you know a lot about. Uh, real estate investment, not much about short sales. Well, if that's the case, if you have a knowledgeable realtor, you don't have to know anything about short sales. Let them do all the heavy lifting. You just make offers. Um, I don't know how else to, to, to answer that or any more simply. Um, if you want to switch around, you take on the debt negotiation. you got to learn uh, the ins and outs of integrating with the banks, how to, how to negotiate debt, how to get this stuff done, put a system in place, start weighing your time here because it does take time. So how much time per day you can spend negotiating debt? And is this agent willing to give that kind of control up to you? If you're going to go down that path, the best source of information I could ever recommend would be our in-house training manual, the Short Sale Flagship System. And you can check it out at shortsaleflagshipsystem.com. There are actual training manuals that we train our loss mitigation team with how to do debt negotiation. Okay, so if you're going to take that path, um, go check them out. I did a few videos on those manuals. You get a good feel of what's in them. There's a written version and then there's an audio version and CDs that go along with it, which are really like a translation, in my words, an application of the training. Um, short sale flagship system, go check it out. Guys, this is Pat and Bob signing off for this week's Friday Coffee Break. You guys have a great week. Peace.